Legos, Unspeakable on YouTube, Mr. Beast on YouTube, Extreme Weather. Let's see what else are there. Roller coasters. Like these are all things that Mikey can talk about forever. And that's awesome, but it can sometimes be annoying, especially when you're trying to make friends. So today is about friends, your superpowers or your kiddos' superpowers and social skills. Hey friends, this is the Finding Mikey podcast, our family's quest to prepare our son Mikey for life. I'm Mike, and from time to time, I'll be joined by my wife, Heather, or other family members and others for interviews and conversations. Now, while I may mention our son, you have a Mikey of your own, and together, we're on a journey to learn as much as we can so that we can understand how to best communicate and guide our kiddos into independent adulthood. Thanks for tuning in. What's up, babe? Hello, hello, everybody. So Mikey has a superpower. Yes, he has many superpowers. And so many of our kids do. And that's what we're going to chat about today because those superpowers are pretty, pretty cool. His interests are awesome. But how many times have we seen Mr. Beast, like the same Mr. Beast video or a Mark Roper? I love Mark Roper on YouTube, but mm-hmm. like I, enough of the elephant toothpaste explosions. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Or filling up your swimming pool with Orbeez. True. Or and buckets. And staying in there for 24 hours. Yeah. He wants to do that. And I don't, I don't have 7 million Orbeez, nor do I want to buy 7 million Orbeez. But then there's cool things that happen. Like just last night we had tornado watches and warnings around Texas. It was brief. But Mikey has been dying to go see tornadoes and he'll talk to you all day about extreme weather. And yesterday I was able to, you know, run just north a little bit and we were able to see kind of the tail end of a pretty substantial tornado and it just, he loved it. And I loved seeing him love it. So I think that was really cool, but we just need to find the right ways to calm him (laughs) basically when he's going off on, Hey, did you know this is an updraft and these are vortices and this is what a da 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 da. Anyway, the point is, those are the things he goes on and on about. And I think certain people tune out and I think it's hard for him to make friends. And that's why we want to chat about really the root of this spoiler is just social skills, right? Yeah. So, I mean, basically Mikey's a very friendly kid. He's very outgoing and he likes to have friends and other kids on the spectrum. It may not phase them that much. They might be more introverted. They're okay with not having a big, you know, friendship circle, But for Mikey, he did want to have friends and he did want to play with all the kids that were playing outside on the street. Well, and he gets butt hurt when the girls have friends over and he doesn't, he's like, I, there are no boys over. Yeah. He wants, he wants friends for sure. Yes. And that's a good reason that you bring that up with Grace, you know, being a couple of years older than him, he sees her, he sees all of the friends that come over to play repeatedly and sleepovers and things like that. And he's like, where are my friends? And You know, I want friends to come over and I want friends to want to play with me and all that kind of stuff. And it's always been a a struggle and and a challenge for him to have friends. And there's a bunch of podcasts that I listen to when I'm out walking around or driving or anything like that. And one of my favorite ones is Tilt Parenting Podcast. And she talked about friendships on one of her episodes. And it was interesting to me because it gave me a different perspective as parents, you know, we're individuals and we have our own ideas of what a friendship circle looks like. And it's all based on how we are and how we were raised and our experiences around friendships. And for our children, we might project that onto them, that they're not going to feel happy or fulfilled in their friendship circle unless it looks a certain way. Mm. And so it was a very interesting podcast to listen to because I saw a different perspective. And in today's age, having an online community of gamer friends. Yeah. That might meet some kids needs for socialization and friendships. Having just that one good friend might meet their needs for socialization and friendships. Having a group of acquaintances where you're not super close, but you can get together and play for a couple hours and have fun and, you know, it's done and over with. And so it was just very enlightening for me because I think for myself, I did see that. I did see how Grace has it, where 
all of the kids on the street, if they're in her age range, they're just automatically going to be right. her friends because <laughs> they're all girls that she's nine. You know, they're all girls that are nine years old. And yes, they're going to have their differences and their immaturities and their, you know, their strengths and all that kind of stuff. But they're going to get together and they're going to play all day. And then they're going to go home and might have to break up a couple little, you know, crying incidences here and there, but they can pretty much run about the house and play. And I don't really get involved. Right. However, with Mikey, I had this desire to set up our house as the fun house because I wanted kids to want to come over to our house and play so that I could supervise their play and I could listen to them playing and provide Mikey coaching on how to play with kids. Right. And so, before he had kids come over, we actually had to go over house rules. Like when your friend comes over, they're your guest. Let's let them pick what they want to play first. And that's we'll a set, tough one. Yeah, right. And we'll set a timer for like 15 or 20 minutes. And when that timer's over, then you guys can pick a new game. And it's going to be this time what you choose to play. Right. And we actually had to teach Mikey that it was not okay. That if a friend didn't want to play what he wanted to play, that he could just ignore that kid and yeah, do his, own, do his thing. own thing Yep. because to him, he still had a friend over. Well, and then because it led to other things, because sometimes that friend would hook up with joy or with grace and they would start to play and they would interact. And then Mikey would feel butthurt because, well, you know, they're not playing with him. Right, right. Right. Or Mikey would be off playing this one thing that he wanted to play and the other child didn't. And Mikey would really like actually say to him, you can go play in my room if you want. Or you can go <laughs> you jump can on the trampoline here. if you want, <laughs> scram, because kid. if you don't want to play what I want to play, I'm still just going to play this. Yeah, scram. He had a really hard time with perspective taking. Sure. Very, you know, definitely he needed social skills coaching in that regard. We tried to find environments of like-minded kids too, right? So coaster mm -hmm. kids, which I'm so stoked about. Guys, if you can take a look at it on YouTube, coaster kids with a K, K for coaster and K for kids, right? We even went and we met up with them and we went to coaster kids days and we had sort of special stuff. And and I think that was a neat way for him to bond with other people on that. And it also didn't hurt too, that the founder of that channel also deals with autism and like they yeah. had two different things to kind of overlap on. So that was neat. He's a great singer too. He's gotten involved in worship at church. And like, I remember we, we tried to get him involved in acting and the girls as well, thinking that that would be a good outlet just for that activity. But as you guys know, some environments are perfect for our kids' personality, and some of them are not, right. right? Our kindergarten story. This is another one where it's just like, you know what? Hey, guys, we love Mike. He's got an awesome personality, but we're dealing with 40 other kids, and here's a different program that might be better for him, right? right. So, you know, kind of nicely being kicked out, if you will, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is important for us to work it into our own home, like we mm -hmm. did in Virginia, which was great, and we've done here, too. Being able to control the environment has been kind of helpful. Being mm -hmm. able to use some of the OT stuff that we've talked about, which are, you know, is this a big problem, small problem, medium problem, no problem, whatever. Right. Here are the rules before incidents occur, like you're talking about there. Those are really, really good. We've tried those things. We continue to try these things and mm -hmm. we're, we're continuing to do other stuff. Right, right. Going back to the play dates, one of the things that I really struggled with was an end time for the play date. Because I would be so excited that you had a friend over to play. Yeah that I would just let them keep playing and playing and playing. And friends are kind of like siblings after like a couple hours. Yeah. They start bickering. Of course. They start not getting along. So then I start hearing that and I'm like, Oh gosh, the play date has expired. <laughs> it has. Well, and, <laughs> and how do I end it? Because I didn't set an end in mind when the boy came over. Cause I was just so excited for Mikey to have someone over to play. <laughs> And so well, I've heard you say it before. We're like, go to one of Mikey's friends and be like, Hey, are you, are you even having fun? Uh -huh. It's okay. If you're not like, we'll get you back home. But like, are you even having fun now? And mm -hmm. you know, the boy was like, no. Yeah. That was something that I needed to work on and have a plan in place because I didn't want that play date to turn sour just because the kids were no longer enjoying their time together because it wasn't a new experience anymore. So I would have to make up reasons where, you know, why the child would have to go home. And then Mikey would not be happy for a while, but then, you know, he would get focused on something else and, yeah. and get over it. I just think it's interesting when our kids have their superpowers, like the things that they're hyper-focused on. I've been volunteering in my church lately in the, the room for special needs kids. And so I've gotten to know a bunch of different kids and their personalities and what their strengths and superpowers are. Mm -hmm. So I always look for that when I'm getting to know them. 
And there was this one child that was not very conversational, but on the intake form from his parents, it said on there that he likes dinosaurs. So after trying to engage him in conversation and get to know him and everything, and it wasn't really working out very well, I went and checked his intake form and I saw that. So I started talking to him about dinosaurs and oh my goodness, like he knew so much about dinosaurs. He knew all of the long names and what they ate and how big they were. And it was just so amazing. And then another kid in the room also liked dinosaurs. And so they started making a connection And I just want to encourage you that that's one of the ways to develop social skills in your kids is once you identify what their superpower is, is to look in your community and see like, you know, just using the dinosaur example, Mm -hmm. you know, are there children's museums or, you know, things in the community that, that are around dinosaurs? Are there any parks where you dig for dinosaur fossils? There are those kinds of things here in central Texas. Yep. There is a rock quarry where a portion of it, you know, is just a sand pit area where kids dig for dinosaur bone parts. Right. And it's like if you go and you engage your child in something that they're naturally gifted to, then they're going to have an easier time interacting with kids that have those desires as well. And it'll get the ball rolling for social interaction and friendships because they found a common interest. And even though they're going to have other hurdles and getting to know each other and stuff, just having that one common thing is going to just help them move forward. Well, will. And I, I still think though, that that may be great for enriching our kids with their interests, but we need to use that as an environment to work on the social skills stuff. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Parents can sit around and watch the kids interact and help them with whatever social skills they, they need help with. If they start arguing or not understanding each other or ignoring each other, then, you know, we can step in and help coach them and guide them. But Mikey still likes to go into the perspective of like, oh, hey, you look like you're around the same age as me. We're automatically best friends. <laughs> right. Just helping him take that a step further. So today's podcast is about social skills, friendships, and superpowers. And social skills isn't just about friendships. Social skills is used in all other areas of helping a child on the spectrum learn about their environment. And one of those is visiting the grocery store. And I think, babe, you set this up great when the kids were little about going into the grocery store with them. Yeah. I just don't want them to be jerks. So (laughs) (laughs) my rules were, my rules were pretty simple. I was like, look, Uh and this is where it's kind of funny because Heather is like, I'm going to go to Costco. And I'm like, let's all go. And she's like, no. And I'm like, dude, I will take the kids. I have no problem taking the kids and none of them end up with concussions. There's a story there (laughs) (laughs) goes way back. Everybody's fine now. We're good. But yeah, really, it's just about when I'm in the car, we're about to get out. I'm like, look, this is what I expect. You're going to hold my hand or you're going to hold on to the grocery cart. You're going to sit in the cart. Like these things need to be very prescribed and structured. I don't want them to try to surprise me. I want them to understand what I expect. And I want to quiz them on what I expect. Like if Mikey, when he was younger would stand up in the cart where he's supposed to be sitting and be like, yo dude, what did we talk about? And he'll remind me, he's like, well, I sit down and I stay seated down or I sit down or my option is to walk alongside you and hold your hand or hold on to the cart. Those are the limited options that you have. It's not free range and go run some stuff out. But yeah, basically I'm a bit more focused when I go into a store anyway. So it's like, Hey, here's what we're going to get. And sometimes I would be like, Hey, you hold on to the phone. And then the notes app, when we get the veggie straws, I want you to mark off veggie straws. So we're practicing a little bit of reading and we're also just getting through the process here too. So the main point there was like, I don't want to have to be the parent that's like running around the, after my kids or throwing a shoe at them, <clears throat> mom, or, <laughs> you know, being scolded by another parent because I'm disciplining one of my children. Like you've, you've had that happen as well. Right. So really it was just about, here's what I expect and here's how we can do this. And Mikey, after a certain time was like, all right, I want to help bag the groceries. Or I want to talk to the people and I want to do this as well. So we enter into other things that are like, we have to learn how to read body language, you know, Mm -hmm. when people are no longer interested in hearing about roller coasters and then just general manners. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Grocery store. Good time. Yep. Yep. (laughs) I remember when Mikey was younger, it was really challenging to go to birthday parties. There wasn't a lot of structure. There was a lot of games that you would play in groups and 
if he's never been somewhere before, then it opens up a lot of anxieties and unknown expectations. And so there's a lot of, you know, behaviors that would happen. Well, that and we didn't realize this, but like the first couple of birthday parties was like, how come they're getting gifts? Right. And he was jealous. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't like the fact that the birthday Mm -hmm. kids got gifts and he didn't. (laughs) And one of the things that was really hard for him, and I don't know if any of you ever experienced this, but Mikey loves to blow out candles like everywhere. Oh, like yeah, we will go right. to a house that has, where the people are really into candles and they have candles for like, you know, aromatherapy and he will just walk up to their candle and just blow it out. And they'll be like, uh, why did he do this? Blow out the candle. And I'm like, oh, it's one he, of his he, things. He made a wish. Yeah. It's one <laughs> of his things. So that transferred over to birthday parties. Oh yeah. So when it was time to sing happy birthday, He was like a lot of other kids. He wanted to stand right next to the birthday kid because they're the special kid of the hour. He wanted to sing really loud for them. Happy birthday. And he wanted to blow out their candles. For sure. Before they blew out their own candles. So every time we went to a birthday party, I had to talk to him before we went about how we're not going to blow out the kid's birthday candles. And then while the mom is setting up the birthday candles and the cake, I had to pull him aside Mm -hmm. and remind him again that we are not going to blow out the birthday candles or we will, we will have to leave. We've had to leave a bunch of birthday oh, parties yeah, we have. because he will still blow out the birthday candles. Yep. Does he do it anymore? No, yeah. but you can tell, you can see it in his eyes that he really wants to blow out those candles. Well, and I think, well, anyway, it's shifted a little bit. He just wants to, you know, scream the song now. So. Right. <laughs> so right. that's okay. And here's the other thing too, guys. I think this is awesome. My friends know Mikey. He was invited to that birthday party for a reason. Like they know him. They know me. I honestly would talk to them about his birthday candle thing. Some of my friends would say to me, do you want us to relight it so that he can blow the birthday candles out after the child does? Or they've even put a candle in his cupcake, for example, because Uh like his dietary differences, right? Right. So they've let him blow out his own candle while they're doing theirs too, which has led (laughs) to like everybody gets a candle to blow out, which is kind of cute, but also not the traditional thing. So yeah, yeah, it was was neat, but Mikey's 11 now and I love sharing his stories and like remembering because it just goes to show you like how far he's come and that the struggles that you're dealing with right now with your seven-year-old, you're probably not going to be dealing with with your 11-year-old. Consistency and persistence are key with our kids on the spectrum because they run by repetition and structure and also by being reminded of the behaviors that are not okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, another one that came to mind, I don't know what you were going to talk about, but I'm going to go ahead and talk right over whatever your thought was, is good sportsmanship. He's an athletic little dude. We've got him into like rock climbing and he did great there. He's done parkour. Awesome at bowling, even though that was a struggle to kind of get (laughs) into the point where it's like failure is okay. But we're like, okay, those are all individual things. You know, you can swing a golf club pretty darn good. Those are all individual things. So we've tried in the past. It's probably time for us to do this again, but baseball. And no matter how much of a rule set there is around a sport like baseball, there's still some improvisation, right? He expects every time that a person who is on first base, when a ball is hit, they're going to move to second base and he has an option to tag them out or whatever. Right. And when that doesn't happen, because you know, the first baseman caught the ball and he's out so that the runner on first wouldn't advance that sends him into like, why didn't that person go? And it becomes a distraction to the team. It becomes a distraction to everything else here too. And which leads to like, well, I don't want to play. And then this is stupid. And, you know, just being really like not open to learning how to do that. He didn't file that as like, oh, okay. So that's another sub rule. They're like, oh, okay. So they don't have to actually run. Okay. All right. No big deal. It's kind of a combination of the, like what I expect in the way a game flows. There wasn't a lot of room for improvisation during the game that made it hard for him because it frustrates him. And then, you know, gloves get thrown down and he storms off and cries or causes a scene and just interrupts everything there too. So the sportsmanship part's tough and that lends itself to, or blends into, if you will, we've talked about this, that, that he would run in a parking lot to get in the grocery store. Cause that was the goal. And he now still wants to run faster than anyone who's running to anything. So, you know, mm-hmm. like we talked about it in our IEPs, right. Is that being first to the door or first out or first in isn't what's important. You know, safety is it. And we've even had to talk about it this weekend. We were moving his older brother into an apartment and he just wanted to go a bit extra, you know, Mm -hmm. running down the second flight of stairs, running up the second flight of stairs, not really carrying things that he should have been carrying because they were 
a bit heavy over, you know, a hundred feet of a walk, not heavy right now, but they'll be heavy after he gets upstairs. He just doesn't want to sort of slow down, but then like his sportsmanship, he's driven by the competition of getting the thing done, but then he's got an ill attitude sometimes when he can't do that. Like he'll give up on a race with his sisters and just be pissed off, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, upset and just irritated. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty darn crazy. The social skills around that and being able to improvise, like I get concerned about later on in life for him interviewing for a job. I mean, it's something we'll tackle later on and we'll definitely have shows on really getting them into independent adulthood. But yeah, it just lets us know that we've got some stuff to do. Before Mm -hmm. we continue though, I'd love to hear from you guys. We would love to hear from you guys about what are your kids' superpowers? What it is that you guys are doing to see them and, and then enrich them? And then how are you tackling social skills. And uh, if you could just give us a call at 469-249-0425, that is the Finding Mikey podcast hotline. It's the direct pipe right in here to the intergalactic headquarters for the podcast. (laughs) It's my office. We'd love to hear that. You know, in addition to that too, if you'll go to findingmikeypodcast.com slash resources, you'll see everything that we talk about in all of our shows. You can, of course, go to the show notes for today's episode to get information specifically like the episode on the Tilt podcast that Heather mentioned will be Mm -hmm. there. But anything else that's kind of common across the board will show up in our resources here as well as ways to get in touch with us. And speaking of resources, this one will be listed here and I want Heather to talk about it. Yes. So we've been talking a lot today about social skills and there is a certain structure to social skills and there's so many things that we need to work on with our kids. And it's not always easy as a parent to think about what to say. How do I explain this situation to my child in a way that they're going to grow and that they're going to shape their behavior around what is acceptable in society or how you're going to go to the airport and like what to expect at an airport. Like we may not think of all the right things to say to your child when you're preparing to go across country to see your grandparents. So there are websites out there that offer information on social skills. And one of the ones that Mike and I have found valuable is a website called Model Me Kids. And Model Me Kids is all about videos, short videos. They're only like 30 to seconds to three minute videos. I say that with enthusiasm because sometimes (laughs) it's hard to hold our kids' attention and especially if it's not something that they're interested in, Mr. Beast, mm-hmm. an hour long YouTube video for sure. Totally right. Cool. But right. how to interact with someone at a grocery store, probably mm-hmm. don't really care about, but you're right. The short yeah. helps. Yeah. So it's a short video. It's a structured video that is narrated by a child. And so that is engaging for our kids because it's not an adult that's like telling you how to do things or telling you how to brush your teeth. It's actually a child saying, Hey, I'm going to get ready for school and I'm going to brush my teeth. And this is how I brush my teeth. It's really neat because it's a video, which our kids are wired for screens, sure are. you know? And I remember back when Mikey was diagnosed with autism, his developmental pediatrician told me to read social stories with him. Right. And which she, we did. And we did. But when I found this website that had videos, it engaged Mikey a lot more. And because they're so short, like I could watch them with him and then we could have conversations and we could watch them frequently because like I said, they need repetition and practice. And they can, I mean, be opened up on your phone right before you're going to somewhere or anything like this too. They're everywhere, right? I love that they cover like... It's not just sort of situational stuff, but like you said, like getting ready for school, it's like first, then, then, then next, Mm -hmm. last, like that kind of a thing, right? right? But they cover things like self-confidence and they tackle some of the bullying stuff here as well. Organization, things like that are deeper and more kind of difficult to tackle, but like motivation, it's really like they get into emotions Mm -hmm. and, you know, they've even got ones there that are for like job skills and things like that. So it really covers a spectrum from age two on up. I dig that. They've been helpful really is a helpful resource there too. And I think if I could tag on to that also, mm-hmm. it's not just the videos that they have there too, is that they've got ways, like they're not just talking to our kids. They're mm-hmm. talking to you and me as parents here. Right. They give us ways to talk to our kids and like in a way kind of like how to watch the videos with the kids mm-hmm. here too. And just encouragement on how to talk to them about it afterwards and really just focusing on practicing these things. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think with those bits there, I think that's super, super helpful. Right. And I'm all about 
community and resources. I say that on almost every podcast because that's just where my heart is at. And this website is affordable. It does have a fee, but hey, it's video, it's production, all that goes into videos. It is affordable. I would definitely check it out. Sure. These are weird things to have to tackle. It's not something that a neurotypical person tends to have to deal with. Like I said, with the baseball example, it's like, oh, okay, I didn't know that rule existed. Logged it, got it, good. Now Mm -hmm. we're set. But for the people that struggle with it, it's multimodal through words, it's through reading, it's through practicing it in person, it's through seeing other people do it as examples, right? You've got to try every different way possible that a person could learn to find the way that resonates with them. I dig it. There's an app for this, right? Yes. The app goes along with certain videos that you might buy. And so it's just supplemental practice. Cool, cool. Well, good. Well, we hope you guys check that out. It's Model Me Kids. You can find out more about it on our resources page at Finding Mikey Podcast. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. This was Mm -hmm. really, really good. I mean, every day we have an opportunity to enrich Mikey's life. And it spills over into the enrichment of our girls' lives Mm -hmm. as well. And when you're an intentional person, when you're an intentional parent, Sometimes these things are the best to help you. These resources like Model Me Kids are the best resources to really just help us take it from a different angle, but really take it to another level. That's it. We encourage you guys to check it out. So anything to add as we leave? Well, you said, you know, about how we're enriching our kids. And that just made me think about how Grace wants to be working with special needs kids. Yeah, for sure. We got to get her on. Yeah, we got to get her on and talk to her a little bit about that. But yeah, Mm -hmm. that's an interesting thing. Yeah, she wants to be a a behaviorist when she's older because she's... It's impacted her development because she has a special needs brother. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. don't get it twisted either. She doesn't want to help her brother. She just wants to help <laughs> she other kids. Does too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that does it for us today. Thanks for ta- <laughs> thanks for taking the time to be with us. 